Okay, I had to close my jacket now because this is the, f the third video outside in ice weather. I think it's ice cold now because my roomie is sleeping inside so I thought why not use the natural light outside and yeah, it's really cold. <laughs> so anyways, good morning guys. What's up? Ling Ling is back with another video. Today, this is the third video in my little series of Chinese language and this is also the first actual vocabulary video because I want to share with you guys the terms that I really love to learn about. I think they're really interesting because um, the, the words uh, or the uh, terms we're going to talk about are linked to actual now contemporary Chinese society's uh, issues and problems. So when you're learning these, you can use it to discuss with Chinese people about these issues. And uh, it's very interesting. You can keep the conversation going about these things for hours of hours of hours. Yes. So without further ado, and before I can't feel my feet and my hands anymore, ah, I should go dancing. <laughs> um, let's get started on this video. Yeah. I have collected three uh, Chinese terms I think go, go really well together. So in this video we're going to talk about three different terms. The first term we're going to talk about is called 生女. So 生 means leftover and 女 means girl. So we're going to talk about leftover girls. So what does this mean? Well, <clears throat> it means that all the girls who don't get married before they <clears throat> are a certain age, which is usually like the end of the 20s and the beginning of the 30s, well, they're called leftover girls. Why is my eye crying? I'm not sad. <laughs> it's just so... No, it's not. <laughs> Um, yeah, so these girls are called leftover girls because they're not married and you're probably thinking why that's so sad Why would you call her them that? Well, this is a traditional thing the Chinese parents They expect their girls to get married at a certain age because they're waiting for grandchildren And they're gonna ask them all the time. When are you gonna get married? Did you have a did you find a boyfriend? Did you meet a guy? What is going on? Should we set, set you up with somebody? It's a very cultural thing. Of course I can imagine that more Chinese parents Parents are more relaxed now but still there is a big pressure especially in the smaller towns these girls they go out they migrate to other places in China they work hard they don't have time to meet boys or oh, the boys are just dumb I don't know <laughs> but they choose not to get married because they're focusing on the career they know that if they get married and have a child they have to go either back home or they have to stay at home be a, a home a housewife sorry it's really cool uh, they have to be a, a housewife and take care of the child but they probably like to work so you see the problem here right yes so sheng nu the leftover girls then we have the liu shou or er tong the liu shou er tong the left behind liu shou and er tong children the left behind children i talked about these before because they're really close to my heart i think this is a, a really sad problem um, because china has some areas some provinces where there are a lot of factories and many poor rural people they migrate to those places to work really hard and they work like 12 13 hours a day and they don't have time to take care of the children or they can't bring the children to the other provinces because because of the Chinese huko ID card. So every child, every person has a huko and if your huko um, is in another province, you should be in that province and you should go to school there and you should you know, do everything there. So it's really difficult to bring their children um, to other places and also if they did, when would they have time to actually take care of them, right? They would have to pay for a daycare and uh, they're already poor. Yeah, no, no, just not good. Um, so they leave the children at home with grandparents or with older children and uh, you can probably imagine that a child left behind without talking to their parents uh, at all like these parents they might come back maybe once a year uh, for Chinese New Year if that actually happens um, it's sad it's really sad you can um, you can look it up on YouTube there are a lot of videos documentaries about this uh, it makes me sad but yeah that's reality and uh, I think you guys should know this <coughs> term so you can use it to discuss it with your Chinese friends because they probably have an opinion on this as well or maybe they know somebody uh, when I was in South China um, 
in the province very uh, close to the uh, factory uh, the factory province of Guangdong um, these children they were all left behind they're like yeah we have no parents like we literally don't know where they are um, they come back once a year if we're lucky um, one big problem with these children are also is also that men not many but a bunch of them become so depressed that they actually um, commit suicide um, yeah so you should check that out it's really important Liu Shou or Liu Shou our tone. That's the second second term. So the third term is a new one. I actually didn't know about this term. I asked a friend no, I talked to a friend about Liu Shou Artong and uh, Xiong Liu and then he was like, Oh you know what? There's actually another one and I was like, Oh interesting. Please tell me. <laughs> so now I'm telling you guys about the third term. It's called Kung Chao Lao Ren. Kung Chao Lao Ren. Kung Chao Kung Kong Chao. It's a new, sorry, it's a new term for me, so I'm not very show sure with it. I don't really, uh, I'm not so comfortable saying it. Kong Chao. So it means empty nest, and Lao Rin means old person. So again, this is about the problem where these people, the young people, sons and daughters, they migrate to other provinces to work hard. They don't have time or money to go back to visit their parents or they're just, you know, really busy and they might not care. I don't know. But yeah, they are not going back to visit their parents and these grandparents are really old now and they're forgotten and they have no one to take care of them and in Chinese traditional culture um, and society you have to take good care of your parents, you owe them everything. Um, yeah, so this is another sad problem. Uh, a good thing is that I heard they're gonna make more nursing homes here in Beijing and they have some in Shanghai as well, but obviously that's mostly for really rich people, so you know, it doesn't really... It, it doesn't really help these uh, poor uh, rural people. You see, if you live in a very small mountain village, somewhere far away and your children they all migrate to other provinces you know China is really big like even if it's the neighbor province it will still take hours and hours and hours to just go home for a visit and people just don't have time for that so a lot of talk has been about this in Chinese society as well so you should definitely also check out the Kung Chao Lao Rin this term very interesting so those were the three terms for today Sheng Nu the leftover girls <clears throat> Also, the Liu Shou Er Tong, the left behind children, and Kung Chao Lao Rin. Also, kind of left behind old people, but emptiness, old people, same meaning, right? I think these terms are very interesting, and you should definitely learn them so you can discuss it with your Chinese friends. I've said this a trillion times in this video now. I'm really sorry for that, but I mean it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this little video, and I hope you're having a great day, evening, wherever you are in the world. Ling Ling is out. See you again very, very soon, and 再见! Bye-bye!